Chinese startups have been changing the world. From messaging apps to smartphones, Chinese startups have grown to be global conglomerates leading the world in innovation. But which startup company in China history is the most successful? Or to stretch a little bit, the most groundbreaking? The answer is the Communist Party of China. I know, it's not an answer one would expect from the way the question was posed, but the Communist Party of China, or the CPC, is the very definition of a successful startup. To achieve so much with so little. Exactly 100 years into its founding, the CPC put an end to China's century of humiliation, presided over a decades-long economic miracle, and eradicated extreme poverty, which has once played a country with a population of 1.4 billion. And all of these earth-shaking achievements could trace back to a small gathering 100 years back in July 1921. A group of young men, with an average age of 28, secretly met in Shanghai and founded a party later known as the CPC. Among these delegates was Mao Zedong, whose coded message to his comrade literally referred to the CPC as a startup company, and himself as one of the co-founders. Like most startups, Mao and his peers kick-started theirs from the ground up, with only some 50 members across the country. By then, China was in a dilapidated state as power-hungry warlords and foreign powers sought to expand their sphere of influence. And this 50 members party decided to end that chaos. They launched a program deemed nothing short of crazy at that time to break the yoke of the old regime and liberate the oppressed mass by way of communism. Six years after its founding, the CPC faced its first major test. To end the domestic turmoil, the CPC joined forces in a united front with the Chinese Nationalist Party, or Kuomintang. The short-lived union toppled several warlords, but ended in Kuomintang's betrayal. Thus pushing Mao and his comrades to initiate the armed struggle on themselves. Kuomintang, who then ran most parts of China, deployed one million strong to overwhelm the CPC's major base in rural South China forcing the Red Army to embark on a 12,500-kilometer-long odyssey to escape the encirclement and pursuit. Despite the prevalent myth of eventual demise, the CPC survived the long march, becoming convinced that nothing would ever bring them down. As Japan pressed a full-fledged invasion of China, the CPC put aside past grievances with Kuomintang and jointly fought against foreign aggression, which led to China's victory in 1945. But the wartime solidarity didn't dissuade Kuomintang to wage another civil war, and it did. It took three years for the CPC and its some one million poorly armed peasant soldiers to manage the impossible, defeating its opponents' 4.3 million regular army. At long last, they established the People's Republic of China on October the 1st, 1949, with Mao Zedong declaring that Chinese people had stood up. In the following decades, the CPC exemplified Mao's words by facing down U.S.-led joint forces on the Korean Peninsula, making China the world's fifth nuclear power and launching its first homemade satellite. While China had indeed stood up, it was still grossly underdeveloped. In December 1978, the pragmatic CPC took a bold turn to the market economy in a move known as the Reform and Opening Up, which catapulted the country to the position of the second largest economy by growing its GDP 30-fold over 40 years. Despite such widely acclaimed economic miracle, by 2012, China still had nearly 100 million people living below the poverty line, one-ninth of the world's total. Right then, Xi Jinping became China's top leader. He successfully delivered the CPC's promise to end the abject poverty by 2020. That is, lifting 10 million people out of poverty every year, 20 people every minute. Having plagued China for thousands of years, penury became history. Looking back to what the CPC has achieved in the past 100 years, I think the startup analogy is sufficiently adequate. It started out with a few aspiring young men, 
change course amid trials and errors, eked out an existence through ruthless competition, and finally rose to the occasion. And now we're celebrating a centennial anniversary, expecting more miracles to be worked in the future. Wouldn't the CPC count as China's most successful startup?